Hey guys, welcome to the next episode of Restoring the UK's Cheapest MX-5. Today we're going to look at some driver aids, namely some parking sensors and a rear view camera. I'm going to get the back of the bumper, or the back bumper, off the car and I'm going to have a look at what packing's behind this, what structural support and where I can feasibly drill holes to put these in. So if you're not already, please think about giving a subscribe to the channel. I do really appreciate the support this gets. Stay tuned. So excuse the mess in here. I am using this as a bit of a storage location at the moment, but I think I need to pop off some trim clips. And then in the rear arches, it looks like there's two bolts that need to come off. If I can get the camera to focus on those, there you go. Um, and I dare say there's probably going to be some underneath the bumper as well. So let's, let's start taking it off and see where we end up. to remove the whole rear bumper. What I've got is a perfectly positioned grommet here that can take my electrics through. I need to tee into the reversing light, which I can take from here. That will power the parking sensors. And I do believe that when I put the rear camera, yeah, ignore the persuasive percussion tool there. Um, by the time I put the rear camera in probably here somewhere, we should be pretty good and be able to access everything. So I don't think I need to take the whole bumper off. Let's give it a go. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put tape across the rear bumper, find my center mark. And what that will do is allow me to then mark where I want to drill for the camera and the parking sensor. So let's get it taped up and let's mark out where our center is. So what I've done is I've set up my laser level that I would typically use for DIY and I've shone it onto the bumper. You can just about see it there. And I've used the center of the Mazda logo as a reference point. It's not helped by the fact that the number plate, I think is a little bit off center because of the GB marking over here, but that gives me bang on dead center that I can then measure out from. Let's do it. I said about not having to take the rear bumper off. Complete lie. <laughs> I forgot I bought um, concealed parking sensors, so they go on the back of the bumper. That glues to the back, and then the parking sensor clips into that from behind. And what you end up with is a flush parking sensor to the bumper, not one of those ones that sort of pushes in from the front. It looks a lot more OEM, but you do need to take the bumper off to bond this to the inside of it. So in the spirit of doing things properly, let's get the bumper off and drill the holes where I've marked them out and bomb these on. sensors and the camera came with their own drill bits so you know you're getting exactly the right size point of no return I guess so what I've done is my pilot hole in each location I'm now going to take the tape off because I know where the holes are going so I've got the pilot hole 
and I'm going to put some black vinyl in a square around the hole. Reason being, the, the parking sensors are black as standard. You can paint them and I don't have any sunlight silver paint. So I'm going to mount them all in, but with that vinyl around the hole that I've drilled through, I know it's perfectly the size of the hole, I can come back and paint those when they're on the car and the bumpers back on, saving a bit of time. So let's whip the tape off, get the vinyl on, and then start bonding the parking sensors around the back. Next challenge, how do you get that out of the hole saw? <laughs> Just get a screwdriver. So that's all the holes drilled. It's gone on nicely, the vinyl's done exactly what I wanted it to do. So let's flip the bumper over and start bonding these, um, these parking sensors into the back of the bumper. sensors mounted. I need to trim that support bar a slight bit so that I can get around here. That one's fine and the electrics are all going to go up just that, that gap there. So I'm going to give that a trim, click it back in, get all the wires run across for each of the individual sensors, drill the hole for the reversing camera and then the bumper can go back on the car. Let's do it. So what I've done is I've taped the connectors. There's no need to, they're, they're waterproof, but you know, belt and braces. I've then strapped the cables to the support bars so they're not rattling around. They're not bow tight, there is some slack, so there's not pressure on the connectors. And then I've taken them all up to where they're gonna come through the car. Let's get the camera hold real. through there there's no risk of those chafing as they come through I'll fill that up with um, something probably a bit of self amalgamating tape um, but it needed to be a big hole to get these RCA connectors or VGA connectors and are through for the reversing camera so let's get the, the wires rooted and we can start putting the boot back together one thing I am going to do before I go crazy bolting everything back together and putting the lights in is I'm just going to take my multimeter and work out which of the cables that feeds the rear light does the reversing light so I can take my power feed for the parking sensors. I've just been doing something very silly. If you look at the colour of that, river, that rear light, it's red. If you look at that one, it's white. There is no reversing light over there, so I'm not going to find voltage for the reverse light. Let's try and find it on this side. So that red and yellow cable has 12 volts at it. I'm just going to take the car out reverse, turn the ignition off, and make sure it reads zero volts. The ignition off so that we know it's not a constant live. Perfect. So that red and yellow is the cable we want to use to power the parking sensors. So 
So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take the red cable across here to the, to the, to the reverse light and I'm going to pick up on this earthing point here, put a ring, ring crimp on the neutral and get that one down there. I'll tape it to this loom so that it's all held in place nicely, leaving enough slack on that cable so it's not like a piano string. Let's get that done. So I'm really happy with how that's gone in. I've got the power cable coming along this loom to this ground here, and then it follows this bit of cable loom up, and I've pinned it into the reverse light over here. So I'm really pleased with that. It's all working, tested, and we'll give it a road test shortly once the car's back together. But for now, let's finish bolting everything in and um, get the car back together. I'll take that, that's good. And that's where it stopped us. Enough room to walk behind the car. I think that's a safe distance. I'm pleased with how that's gone. So now I need to get the paint and paint these, and then also wait for the head unit to turn up with the screen so I can wire that in and make sure the reversing camera is working. Let's get that done. So. What we've got to do, we've got to get all these cables tidied up from the parking sensors, they cannot stay like that. And then we need to run the cable to the front of the car for the camera, the video cable. And I'm going to try and take that through here, which is going to mean taking this trim behind the seats off. So let's see how that goes. the cables all loomed up and tidied away back there. I'm using this, or well, I'm going to try and use that port down the side of the soft top there and I think, I think I've found it at this end. So let's pass the cable through and see if we have any luck. Fingers crossed. I thought that was going to be a lot more of a pain than it was. So that's everything wired in, in the boot. I'm going to get all of these panels, the you know, trim around the boot, back in and then move up to the front of the car. Let's get it done. down the side of the carpet there. I've taken this bit of trim out in the footwell and we now need to run the cable over to the head unit for when the new head unit arrives to get that plug, there is it, get that plug into the back of the head unit. So we've got to take it across the dash and get this back together, get the trim back on down here. Something I've wanted to do since I got the car is give these a clean. They're not retracting properly, they're staying stuck out. So I'm going to give them a clean and see if that helps anything or if need to be I'll have to replace the seatbelt. Let's see how we go. So that's the seatbelt cleaned. Check out the colour of that cloth. That is disgusting. That is every bit the reason why I wanted to clean that. Hopefully it retracts a bit better now it's clean and doesn't stay stuck out. The cable's run in under here. It's gone in really nicely. It's not in the way of anything from the pinch it. All we need to do now is get it over to the head unit. Let's do it. The thing's got drastic. I had to take this out. Um, the person who owned the car before put an aftermarket head unit in 
Um, nothing, nothing special, nothing to write home about. Just a, you know, proper, proper 90s spec, max power type thing. Um, so in taking that out, um, quite luckily, they seem to have purchased and installed the Connect 2 uh, wiring loom, which is quite a renowned, I believe, brand within the MX-5 community. And it allows connecting up of the steering controls, amongst other things. I think there's like a DAB aerial here, which I don't know why it wasn't <laughs> over there. But anyway, we'll move that. Um, but it's also things like the, the aerial adapter and all that's already in there. So in trying to get to all of that, I had to take the cubby hole out, which meant that all of this had to come out from here. So not the end of the world, it was literally just two screws and it popped out. I think when the head unit arrives, I may have to cut this out of here to, to make it a double din. I don't know how it's going to fit, so I'm not going to cut anything yet. I'm going to wait for the head unit to arrive and then I will see what we're doing there. So it's a new day. The car's had a couple of deliveries. I've had a haircut. Let's try and get this stuff finished up. So we've had the double din unit turn up. And as I mentioned a bit earlier, I think we're very fortunate that the previous person's put this Connects 2 CarPlay kit in. So I'm gonna spend a bit of time <laughs> tidying up this bird's nest of a wiring situation. And then I think we will, <laughs> we will then have a look at getting the double din unit in. I think the problem I'm gonna have is I might need to order a replacement surround for the dials. It looks like I don't necessarily have the points to mount up. So I wanna get it in, I wanna get it working, prove that everything I've done back there with the camera works, make sure everything connects through properly. Once it's in and working, we'll have a look at what we're doing with the fascia. So the screen's in, it's working, that's good. I need to connect the aerial up, we don't have any sound, but we've got the Apple CarPlay working perfectly. It's connected up to, to the phone. This link wire is perfectly um, activating the rear view camera on the screen. I'm definitely gonna need a different surround, so I'm gonna get one of those on order. But for now, let's, um, let's park this and let's get those sensors painted so we can get the back bumper looking a bit more put together. they look really smart they look almost OEM by the fact that they're recessed behind the bumper rather than being stuck in on top of it and I think they complement the reversing camera really well so job well done I think we've done it we've got the camera working but as you can see it's a little bit sideways so let's jump around the back of the car and see if we can get that camera pointing around the right way Uh, excuse the beeping guys, it's every bit as annoying for me as it probably is for all of you. Um, it's the parking sensors that someone thought it would be a good idea to fit to this car. So I'm happy with the functionality, the car plays working perfectly, the rear camera is working perfectly. It knocks into, um, into the rear view camera just on its own as it should when you go into reverse. So once the screen's booted up and then when you go into reverse, it kicks over to the camera. So I'm, I'm pleased with that. I need to get this surround ordered, so I'll get that done. We can then get it mounted in and get the wiring sorted out. One eternity later. So the surround arrived, the screen is in. I did have to make a slight modification to the bezel surround because of this volume knob. Can't odds it. It's just these Chinese double dins are a bit too big. They're not a standard size. This was, I think, £50 for this screen unit and then a few quid for the surround. 
I didn't want to spend three or four hundred pounds on a JVC or Sony or similar head unit um, that is a double DIN. So that's the price you pay. So if you're doing one of these, be warned, the Chinese double DINs are a little bit bigger than the standard UK size. Other than that, it's, it's gone in wonderfully. It all works when you go into reverse, just as an OEM reversing camera would. So I'm really pleased with that. But that's it for today's video, guys. Thanks for watching. If you're not already, please do give a like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace. Hey!